Hello folks, welcome to a video with yours truly, Lafaria. Today I'm bringing you a video of a series called Mulligan Signs. Now this series I've been planning for a long time now, but I've had a few issues with that. Um, for one thing, I originally wanted to do this about the duels of the Planeswalkers games and the decks within there. And I wanted to do like videos about uh, like deck spotlight videos and uh, show off the decks and show what they're good at, what they're bad at, um, how you're supposed to play them in my opinion, and generally how they work and the mechanics within them. Um, but that was kind of problematic because the decks are not that good. Um, I don't think they are very well engineered and there were like two or three decks that were worth making a video about. So uh, that was not that good of an idea. Um, but now I got, uh, I finally got around to uh, buy Magic Online, and so I've uh, reinvented this series for myself. You might, you might say. Uh, what I want to do here is uh, basically a series about deck building and uh, especially decks that I've come up with, and additionally maybe the uh, current meta game in Magic: The Gathering especially for standard decks. So this is uh, a spotlight video for my first Magic Online deck that I've ever built, ever. And I've restricted myself to the standard cards that you get with a new Magic Online account. And uh, I've bought the Deck Builders Essentials, which um, add some cards from Return to Ravnica block into that. So if you see some numbers that are kind of odd uh, in there, that's just because I don't have any more of this card. Um, but I will I'll tell you more about that. So let's take a look, take a look at the uh, deck, shall we? I've decided to make a Rector's Agro deck because I thought it's, it might be the easiest deck to, to build for, uh, for now. And it doesn't require a lot of decision making, so I can just build uh, a quick deck and just play away with it and learn the interface of Magic Online and all that good jazz. So at first I got three creatures in there uh, from M14 that have kind of a bit of a synergy between them. And I've called that the Sacrifice Engine. Um, the core of that engine is the Bloodburn, the 2-2 two, two, uh, for 3, and I can sacrifice a creature and it gets plus 2, plus 2 until end of turn. And the other two guys are more the fuel for that engine. Um, the Tenacious Dead is a 1 for 1 for 1, and I can uh, bring him back for 2 mana when he dies. So I can just sacrifice that guy and pump up the Blood Burner and just get it back for 2 mana, which is kind of neat. And uh, which I've done uh, a few times already. Um, a neat little little trick in there was, um, for example, I, jump, I used the Tenacious Dead to jump block a big guy of my opponent and I just sacrificed it and um, brought it back and then the damage was blocked regardless and I didn't lose the creature and uh, last but not least we have the festering newt that guy is the man I love him he is really really cool the reason why he's so cool is he's super cost efficient uh, as you can see he's a one one for one and when he dies, a creature in opponent controls gets minus one, minus one until end of turn. Um, by the way, if you want to look at, have it, take a look, closer look at one of the cards, you can just pause the video whenever you like, of course, and just uh, look at it because I might go over it kind of fast. So yeah, festering new, extremely cost efficient. Uh, when he dies, he gets uh, a creature in opponent controls gets minus one, minus one until end of turn. That guy can almost always trade cost if effectively with your opponent. If you attack with him and he blocks uh, with a one toughness creature and has another one toughness creature out, for example, uh, he will kill both, which is cool. The two for one trade is al always what you want with this deck. Or he can uh, take down a two toughness creature. Or uh, Within this this little engine here, you can uh, sacrifice it with a block band, buff him up, uh, get value out of that, and um, in addition, you can in addition to that, you can just kill a creature of your opponent or simply make it weaker. No, you know, you get the the idea. I'm aware that these creatures are, are not really um, aggro per definition. Uh, more controlish as can in a way, but I wanted to throw in there because I thought this synergy was kind of neat 
and uh, you can use them in, in aggressive ways uh, as well, of course. But uh, in the future, I will probably bought these out or maybe just leave the festering nudes in there or stuff like that. We will see where the deck goes. Um, but for now, I'll leave them in there. They do their job in there. Next up, I have a few cheap early game creatures from Return to Ravnica block. First of all, a Rectus Keckler. That guy is the perfect creature for this deck. There is no creature that's better for an aggressive deck like that. Uh, all of these creatures have Unleash, which you may not be familiar with as a mechanic from Return to Ravnica. Um, what it basically is, is I can, as you can see, I can um, choose to bring these guys in with a additional plus one plus one counter as they enter the battlefield. And if I knew, then can't block. That's all. Um, so I'm not that worried about blocking uh, because it's an aggro deck and I just want to whack away and I want to attack with as many creatures and, uh, as I can anyway. So I'm not that concerned about blocking. So Rectus Keckler is more often than not a 2-2 two, two for 1, which is absolutely perfect. And I can, play a, I can pay a red or a... Uh, black mana for that, and so as long as I draw a basic land and a Rectus Cackler in my opening hand, I can play him on turn one, and I have a 2 2 for one. Oh, which can't block, but I don't care, as I said. Next up, a Thrill Kill Assassin, um, a 1 2 Death Touch Unleash, kind of neat as well. Um, I will probably board that out in, in the future for a few additional Rectus Cacklers, but we'll get to that. Um, I just wanted to throw in everything with Unleashed that I had. Um, next creature uh, in the same vein, a Grim Roust about. Uh, a 1-1 one, one Unleashed for 2 with Regenerate. Uh, yeah. As I said, will often come into, the, into battle as a 2-2. Two, two. Can't block, but that's not my concern. And a Spike Jester from Dragon's Maze, another creature which is absolutely perfect for the deck. A 3-1 with haste, and I've done t dealt tons of damage with this creature so far. And he works really, really well in this sort of aggressive archetype. Now, I'm playing a few creatures from Return to Ravnica block which have a kind of evasion theme going. Uh, first of all, there's a Shadow Elder Denizen from Gate Crash which can give a uh, creature of mine uh, Intimidate until end of turn whenever a black creature enters the battlefield under my control. Which is of course very useful as you might imagine. For example, I can uh, give one of these Spike Jesters or um, Rectus Cacklers or uh, creatures like that uh, Intimidate until end of turn and um, swing them in because especially the Spike Jester can easily be blocked by a 1-1 one, one creature or um, something like like a little weenie or a token or, and, and he's effectively useless and he gets killed. So if I can have this Intimidate in there, that's kind of kind of useful. And next there are two, two Flies, a Basilicus creature from Gate Crash, which is a 1-2 for uh, one two flying for 2, which uh, in itself is cool. But it also has Extort, um, with which I can uh, drain my opponent's life and gain life for myself whenever I cast a spell. And that's always cool, and I, I like um, this grindy and racy matchup. And at last we have a Rectus Drake, a 1-2 Flying Unleash for 3. This guy will, of course, again enter the battlefield as a 2-3 most of the time. Um, and that's a strong flyer for a reasonable cost, of course. Then we have a few creatures which are more in the mid-range department of the mana curve. And first of all, a Spawn of Rixmardi, a 5-3 for 5 with Unleash. Will more often than not be a 6-4, and 6-4 is a scary number. 6 power is nothing that you want to let through uh, willy-nilly. And 4 toughness means he can be blocked by... Uh, a lot of creatures and survive that. So this guy is really, really threatening in the mid to late game and is quite the bomb. Next up, a Rix Mardi Guild Mage, uh, which is only two, a two mana creature, but uh, you need some more mana to uh, activate his abilities, which which is why I've, I've put him in here. 
Uh, first of all, a target blocking creature gets minus one, minus one until end of turn, uh, which is kind of neat to to trade effectively within combat, which is always always nice in a uh, in an aggro deck. And I can use excess mana that I have to um, drain a bit of his of my opponent's life. Uh, if you have nothing else to do with your mana, then you might as well do that. Then we have a Hellhole Flailer, a 3-2 three, for 3 with Unleash, and I can sacrifice it and he deals damage equal to its power to target player. So um, again, very cost efficient, will always be a 4-3 more or less. And uh, should my opponent have a few fat blockers, then um, I can get through to him um, regardless by just sacrificing the creature and dealing the damage. And a Carnage Gladiator for a 4-2 for 4, which has an, an interesting ability. Uh, whenever a creature blocks, that creature's controller loses one life. Now, keep in mind that it's a symmetrical effect, so that um, holds true for you as well. But you want to unleash your creatures anyway, so you can't block uh, regardless. I have not ha had this guy out f um, much so far. But um, everything that discourages my opponent from blocking is kind of something that I want to have in there. And I can regenerate him, which is, which is of course nice. So here are a few burn spells that I have in there. Of course, in a red deck, that's kind of kind of mandatory. Uh, two shocks. Shock, very uh, straightforward spell. Two damage, two target creature or player. For one red mana, um, cost-efficient, cost cheap, flexible and you can use it as a cheap removal spell for weak creatures. You can zap away at your opponent with some excess mana that you uh, might have at your disposal, or you use it as a finisher or whatever. So the, there are a lot of possibilities to use this, and I, I like that, of, of course. Um, next up, Flames of the Firebrand. Very, very flexible spell. You can deal three damage divided as you choose. And this is mo mostly a at least a two for one. You can often kill uh, at least one big creature of his, or two cre two smaller creatures, or you can t kill two one toughness creatures and zap him. So you got a three for one, or kill at least um, even th three one toughness creatures. So yeah, very very flexible spell. Um, pretty good. One of the best burn spells in M14, and I like that in there. Yeah, next up, Annihilating Fire. Um, three damage this time for three. Uh, for three casting costs. Uh, not so powerful as a Shock or fl Flames of the Firebrand, but has the uh, the kind of interesting implication that a creature killed by it is exiled instead of put into the graveyard. So this spell is kind of good against decks that have some kind of graveyard shenanigans in there. And... Um, at last, I have a Volcanic Geyser and an X-Bell this time. Uh, can be used to bring down larger creatures than a 3 toughness for 4 or 5 or 6, maybe, if you get the, the mana. But um, for now, I mostly play it as a finisher to get the, the last points of damage in to kill my opponent. And again, very, very flexible. The mana cost is not too shabby. It's a bit expensive, but... Um, in the late game, you can uh, mostly make that happen. And a few removal spells, because you know you can't play a black deck without removal, eh? Two Doomblades, one of the best uh, removal spells in the format. At the moment, two mana kills everything except black creatures. Should you run into black creatures, you're kind of screwed. But you have your burn spells for that, and you can use an X card, maybe in Liturgy of Blood. Uh, two of that as well, kind of costly this time. For five mana, but uh, you get to uh, you get three black mana back to maybe cast another spell, get a creature out, or um, like extort with the basilica screeches Should you have them on the battlefield, so you can uh, see so this card is more like a two for one, um, oftentimes. And then I've got two more cards in there that I, I think I haven't gotten around to playing them um, so far but I wanted to put them in because I needed two, two more cards in the deck and um, I thought they might do well first of all they're madcap skills from Gatecrash 
uh, creature gets plus three plus zero and can't be blocked except by two more creatures which is cool because I had games where my opponent had like a shipbreaker kraken out and that was the only only creature that he had and he could could, could just block everything that I had and well, it's kind of neat if you can get around that uh, and then there's a deviant glee uh, another aura creature gets plus one plus two plus one and i can give it trample whenever i want that's kind of nice if i put it on like this um the hellhole flailer or what it was called uh no the spawn of rick's Marty, i mean so you can get the a uh, bit of the damage in um regardless uh should it be blocked for the mana base, I'm using four Rector's Guild Gates and six Mountains and 15 Swamps for a total of 25 lands, which is kind of ideal. Um, the distribution is, is uh, almost perfect. I have uh, exactly twice as many black symbols in my spells as red symbols. Um, and I have 10 uh, red sources and 19 black, so that's kind of ideal. And... I do have a sideboard for this um, for this deck, but it's not worth mentioning because I just threw some random cards in there that, that I uh, happen to have, like two extra Doom Blades and um, some mass removal like like Shrivel against um, a t Weenie and Token decks. But I you don't want mass removal in an aggro deck, which plays uh, cheap creatures itself most of the time. So. Um, so don't pay really attention to this to this to the sideboard. Um, and for the last part, I want to do some kind of a wish list uh, for this deck where I want to, this deck to go in the future and kind of ideas that I have for it. Uh, first of all, I want to have uh, more Rectus Cacklers in there. You should have learned by now how good this guy is, in my opinion. And I want to run four of them if possible just so I can, can whack away uh, from turn one onwards. Then I had the idea of putting in a Moss of Cruelty, so maybe two. Of course, that guy would be the ultimate win condition. Uh, if I can get in one attack with him, my opponent is mostly dead because he's at one life then, no matter how many how much life he has, and I can just finish him off with a burn spell after the combat, spell, uh, combat phase or um, finish him with a uh, regular attack next turn. Or, and so on and so forth. Or he can just sit there and kill one of your uh, opponent's creatures every turn, for the most part, because you will attack with him and force him to block with it. He can't. He cannot let the attack through if he has any sort of blocker, and because he has first strike and death touch, he will m kill almost any creature on, to, on the battlefield while uh, surviving. Uh, so your opponent would need like a at least four uh, four power creature with first strike or double strike, and if I can kill a creature, if I can trade my master of cruelties for a creature like that, that would be worth it in my opinion. And I've uh, come up with the idea of the Herald of Torment, a brand new card from Born of the Gods. Uh, of course, the combo here is you can bestow this Herald of Torment onto the Master of Cruelties, so he gets flying, and you can um, get in with with the Master of Cruelties and basically win the game from there. Or you can play him as a creature and have a 3-3 flyer for 3, which is cool. And a few spells that I might want to consider for the future. At first I got Rectus's Return, which is, in my opinion, a better uh, X damage spell than um, Volcanic Geyser. It only deals damage to, to your opponent, but he has to uh, discard X cards, and I can pay uh, black and red mana for it, which fits my mana base a bit, more, a bit better. And this spell hurts, because he loses cards and loses life. And this is just what I want in there. And then two uh, more removal spells, a Dreadbore and a Hero's Downfall. Dreadbore is maybe better than Doomblade because I can kill any creature, not just uh, non-black. And I could play uh, kill kill Planeswalkers with it. I haven't played against Planeswalkers so far, but should they come in, I can have a way to deal with them. And the only reason Dreadbore is maybe worse than Doomblade is because Doomblade is just black and Dreadbore is red-black. But um, that's mostly not a concern in my deck because my deck is red, uh, black. 
And last but not least, I considered Hero's Downfall, which is a very powerful card. Instant speed this time. Uh, spot removal, unconditional removal. Um, can target Planeswalkers again. So I can kill the Planeswalker he... Uh, my opponent played at the end of his turn already and I can, can see that being a really really powerful spell so that's it for the deck and now finally I will try to get into a constructed match and hopefully get a good game in so I can uh, show you a bit how the deck operates uh, I'll just open a, f a quick match and see who joins and then we, we'll see what happens um, this is the just for fun lobby in Magic Online and I have selected my Novice Rectus Aggro deck and I will host a match let's see So, we're up against a player called Jimmy Jimmy. I won the die roll, of course, I would like to play first. Uh, my hand is pretty cool. Yeah, I will keep this. Enough mana and a few cheap creatures, just what I want. Um, yeah. Cost this and the Cackler. Do I want to unleash? I do want to unleash it. There you can see the power of the Cackler. 2-2 two, two on turn 1. Uh-huh. Temple of Silence. Cool Born of the Gods. Uh, no, not Born of the Gods. It's uh, Theros. Theros Dual Land. He can't do anything. Fair enough. And I draw a, another Swamp, which is fine. And play the Basilica Screech. Uh, no, it should go in and attack first. Boom. Can't do anything. Takes two. Whoops. And I skipped my second main face. Shit. <laughs> That's how good I am. Imposing Sovereign. Creatures your opponent's control enter the battlefield tapped. Uh, that's fine with me. Boom. And I will play the Basilicus creature now. Hopefully. Yeah, I will not attack because it could block. Yeah. Boom, boom. There we go. Declare attackers. Uh, well, <laughs> should I attack with this guy? I could trade for this, which I kind of want. Yeah, we'll go in. A few blocks, he blocks. But then my creature's down into the battlefield tapped. Okay, he lets it through. Cool. So he's at 16. So playing Precinct Captain. First strike to two. Whenever Precinct Captain deals combat damage to player, put a 1-1 one, one white soldier creature token onto the battlefield. Ah, oh, that's kind of scary against my deck. But okay, yeah, I take two here. Sure. Not the end of the world. Another swamp. Um... <laughs> Again, I will go in with this. If he blocks, he blocks. I want to have this guy gone. If he trades it for it, I'm totally happy with that. And, um, yeah, go in with the Basilica's creature, of course. And then play the Rectus uh, Drake next turn uh, at, the, at the end of the uh, the second main phase. And then he's stored for one. So, go in with that. He blocks, okay. Fine with that. Totally fine with that. Oh shit, he has first strike. Yeah. I suck at magic. Uh first strike combat step. Yeah, yeah. Cool. And main phase, Rectus Drake. Uh, one, two, three. I 
may pay one black, and I do. Boom. Yes, I do want to unleash. There you go. Three flying damage on the board. Next turn I can play Liturgy of Blood. And kill this precinct captain. A Spear of Hilliard. Wow. A rare from Theros. Destroy target creature that dealt damage to you this turn. Ugh, that is... That is annoying. Okay. That is six damage, which is not good. He gets a token. Sure. And uh, I play this. And the Liturgy of Blood on the Precinct Captain. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, I cannot pay the Extort cost, but I want this guy gone. Cancel. Uh, if you continue to your next video, yeah, yeah, okay. I cannot use the mana that I got from Liturgy of Blood. I go in for three. He's kind of winning the race at the moment. But we will see what happens. Spear of Helio is really good. If I lose, that is mostly because... Um, he just has better cards, but I haven't lost yet. He just goes in, sure. Another Rector's Drake, sure. Why not? Attack first. Come on. Okay, uh, yeah, cast instance. Do not want to do that. Club blocker step. Okay, now main phase, rector strike. Uh, one, two, three. Yep, I want to play this. Okay. Okay. He kills my other rector strike. That's that's okay. And I want to unleash it. Sure. And now we're at seven for nine. Another Temple of Silence. Hmm. Goes in for five. I go down to four. Next turn I will have to leave the Basilica creature behind. And it can kill the Rector's Drake, which is which kind of sucks. But I have to go in, I have to deal damage. He goes down to 5. And if I don't uh, draw anything good, then I'm mostly dead. Brave the elements, choose a color of white creatures you control in protection from the color of choice. Yeah, that's GG. Okay, I don't feel too bad about that. There were some good cards in there that he had there. Um, but I think the, the deck performed rather well for being kind of cheap. It has no rares in there, keep that in mind. And uh, Spear of Helia just, just sealed the deal because you could just um, kill every every creature of mine uh, that dealt damage to him. So I kind of need something against that. Or I need to I need just better cards in there. I, I need cards that can, can kill him quicker, such as Master Cruelty. 
But as I said, I don't feel too bad about that. Uh, that was a nice game I had fun there. So if you enjoyed the video, that's it for now. If you enjoyed it, um, please let me know. If uh, there's something I can do better, please let me know as well. I'm still learning, of course. And let me know in the comments below or um, message me on Twitter or anything. Yeah, if you liked it, please, uh, I always appreciate if you gave me a like or favorite it or um, just let me know. You may, of course, subscribe to my channel. Uh, that's it f for me for today. Uh, thank you very much for watching and see you next time. Goodbye.